Teenagers make up approximately 7% of the American population, and their number one killer is right outside their door. Car crashes take an average of 10 teen lives every day. The main cause? Reckless driving. In this technological age, distraction becomes easier to succumb to, especially on top of the already existing dangers of windy roads, speeding, DUIs, noisy friends, loud music, and busy lives. Phones can be a recipe for destruction. According to the Allstate Foundation, reaching for a phone while driving increases risk of accident by 9 times. Texting increases that risk by 23 times. Texting while driving is like being under the influence of 4 beers. Texting takes the eyes off the road for an average of 5 seconds, which at 55 miles an hour is like driving the length of a football field completely blindfolded. Statistics can be hard to grasp. It's easy to say, I'm different. The chances are too small. That never happened to me. 13 years ago, these were the thoughts of 18-year-old Marcus Leland. And he was right. He didn't die. But his decision to drive recklessly led to the death of four others. Three of his friends and an innocent driver who was driving in the opposite direction. Two of these victims were brothers, Timothy and Daniel Reynolds. I sat down with their parents, Alice and Tom Reynolds. So could you explain the incident and what happened? On February 17, 2000, um, three teens came to our door. They told me that Tim, our 18-year-old son, had been in a very bad crash, and they didn't think he had made it. And I told them they were kidding. This was a joke. And my husband came in and said, what, what's going on? What's going on? And um, I said, they said he's dead. Tim is dead. So we got in the car and headed towards Sand Canyon. And there was so much traffic and we could hardly even drive. And it was taking so long I couldn't stand it. I jumped out of the car and started running. And um, a sheriff stopped me and said, where are you going? I said, my son is supposed to be in that car. I have to get to him. They said that uh, two teens had been taken to the hospital and three teens were dead. And I said, I need, I need to go up there to identify my son. And they said, no, you can't do that. It's a crime scene. So I explained what Timmy was wearing that night. And the sheriff walked up to the crash scene and came walking back and told me, yes, that Timmy was dead. My older son, Scott, called and said that he found that Danny might be in the car as well. So he walked up to the crash scene and uh, he walked back and he had to tell me that my other son was dead too. So at that point I just fell to the ground and uh, I had to find out that both my sons were killed. There was speculation that they were racing. The car that they were in was going at a very high rate of speed, over 100 miles an hour. Short term was, you know, basically I didn't want to live afterwards, you know, losing two children. It was, how do you survive after something like that? It's the hardest thing a parent ever has to do because you don't expect to bury your child and then have to go back to your house and sit at a table with two empty chairs and go into their rooms and see all their belongings and know that all the dreams that they ever had just gone. Long term after the court process was over, we were coming up on the one year. We wanted to do something in their memory. We talked with the city and put together a community march, walk in their honor. But it was also to promote safe driving. I felt like I needed something to help me give me a purpose to go on and I felt like if I could just save one kid out there that that would help me and my purpose and my healing and so I asked to speak at the FA 15 minutes program which is a program at the high schools that's a reenactment of a crash. After that first time of speaking we've spoke every every year to every 15 minutes programs at all the high schools and um, I think it really gets through those kids. You know that you can die. You are not invincible. You can die and you will die. Imagine what it feels like to hear those horrifying words from a sheriff's deputy confirming our worst nightmare. 
that yes, both our sons were dead. Imagine what it feels like to say our last goodbyes before their caskets were lowered into the ground forever. Imagine what it feels like to get phone calls for them and have to tell the caller that they are dead. Teens and adults alike must realize that while they are driving, every decision and choice they make affects the life and safety of everyone around them. Please don't put your parents through this pain that we have every day. It was 13 years Sunday that we lost our sons. This pain never goes away. I don't want your parents to have to go through this pain. One decision. That's all it takes. One bad decision. To text, to speed, to drink and drive. And in just a small few seconds, you could change the life of not only yourself, but countless others. Officer John Lutz gives specific advice for safe driving. So planning ahead, driving within your means, and to realize that it takes 100% of your attention at all times. And that's why distractions are, are a big thing for teens right now as well. They don't really realize how dangerous they are until they're in one of those predicaments. Many of the things that uh, the teen driver has issue with is the experience factor. Uh, not many of them realize the capability of the automobile or its incapability. They don't understand that there are so many variables involved in traffic collisions, whether it be uh, roadway surface condition, uh, inclement weather, whether the, the tires are in perfect shape, whether they're inflated properly. Then we have an impact program, which, you know, they actually interview students and find out what they believe is dangerous. Cobras and Uzis and et cetera. And you realize that all of the stuff above we're texting, not even a third of that is a result as, as it is in texting. And even on the poster here behind me, the dots that are on that matrix there show colors of deaths other than uh, driving accidents. But the white, which is the most obvious, those are traffic collisions as, as are related to teens. Well, I encourage every teenage newly licensed driver to uh, come to the Highway Patrol Start Smart class. It's a class we put on at our office. It's a two-hour class, and it's, fact, it's instructed by a few of the officers here. And basically that class goes over some of the things that most teens don't think about when they're driving. Some of the components that it takes, some of the things they need to know, knowledge about how dangerous certain situations are. Nearly 4,000 American teenagers die from car crashes every year, according to the Allstate Foundation. Right now, I'm at the Santa Clarita Youth Grove, surrounded by 84 tree stumps. Each tree stump represents a life cut short. One for every person in our community under the age of 24 killed in a traffic-related accident. But the time is now for you to educate you and your friends. And together, you can take a step in reducing these numbers and grow like these trees where the kids who never got a chance to. For the Saugus News Network, this has been Cameron Kwan reporting. Visit keepthedrive.com for more information.